It's just me. That's funny, John. It's funny. All right. This is a. Uh, these next two problems we're going to do are very different than the other one. This one is an exceptional case. It's a. Um, it's a very good problem for your SAT. Again, it's a very good problem for the SAT to know. And it's a very basic problem. You're going to see why. All the stuff we've been doing with graphing, we've had uh, asymptotes, intercepts, holes, all those points. This is an example where it's actually a lot simpler. So let's begin by starting. What can I make the numerator look like? X plus 4, X minus 3. Okay. Now, what do you notice right away? There's a hole in the graph, right? Where's the hole at? Good, a negative 4, not 4, right? That's the first thing we start with right away. Now, what I'd like you to do now is this. Before we go on to asymptotes, before we go on to slant asymptotes, before we look at vertical asymptotes or anything else, go ahead and graph the original equation in your calculator. Go ahead and graph the original equation. And try and make your own conclusion. I know this is going to sound weird, but graph the original in your calculator and then try and make a conclusion about this problem. Well, some of you will pick up on it right away, others might take a little longer. Three. Okay. Three. Okay. Three. Okay. Three. Now, please, when you get your answer, look at what you have. So it says error. <laughs> Now, a lot of you see it already. Try and make a conclusion, please. Try and make a conclusion. Already, I know it's a tough one. <laughs> I want you to try your own. I want you to give it away. That's my option. Yeah, try and make a conclusion on your own here. Right in. 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 All right, can somebody come up and draw a sketch of what they see on theirs? Catch, catch, catch. Just draw a quick sketch here. That's all you need. No need for it to be as precise as your actual graph. Okay. Now that's just I mean a little more precise than that. <laughs> the line was good. And then I think it was below, right? Yeah, yeah thank you. That's why. <laughs> Perfect. That's fine. All right. Any, anybody notice anything about this graph and then the function that we're looking at? Did anyone think about the correlation here? There's only a line. Good. Start with there's just a line. It's not a curve anymore, right? There's no curves. So since the numerator is bigger than the denominator, there's a slant asymptote, right? Well, isn't that the slant asymptote actually? So what else about this? Look at the location of the line. And look at what you have up here. There. What's the y-intercept here? What is it? And what do you notice right here, Derek? So take a look, guys. Whenever you reduce something, if you completely reduce the denominator and it goes away, all you have left is what's up top. 
and x minus 3 is this line. Now we have to account for the whole in a second, we're going to, but whenever the denominator completely cancels so that there's no denominator left, it's no longer a rational function. Again, rational functions have that kind of shape we've been looking at, right? That curve shape where you have the symmetry through the origin or through some point. Whenever the denominator can completely cancel, just look at what's left. And what's left for u of x, the simplified form is just x minus 3. Well, that's the same thing you would get for the slam asymptote. Whenever these things cancel, whatever's left up top is what your graph will be. So in this problem, the actual graph is just a line x minus 3. But you've got to account for the whole. Okay, that's the only thing you have to account for. So let's go ahead and plug the negative 4 in here to find the whole. What's left on top is your graph. So take your negative 4, please. Plug it into your simplified form to find the location of the hole. Remember, you know the hole is at negative 4 for x, but what's the hole's y value? That's the question we're asking. So again, there's the hole's x value. The question is, what is the hole's y value? It's going to say error if you plug in your calculator. You need to plug it into the simplified form here. Because when you plug it into the original form, you get 0 over 0, which is indeterminate. Remember, guys, some of you are mixing that word up, by the way. Did you notice in your quiz? Undefined is a number over 0. Indeterminate is 0 over 0. Very different things. Because indeterminate really means we don't know what's going on there, hence the hole. That's what the hole's location is all about. We don't know what's actually going on there, so there's a hole to show that it's an empty space. We're not sure. Whereas something over 0 as a number, there's your vertical asymptote, because we know that that limit goes to infinity there. Two different things. Now here, the question is, what is the hole's location? Well, what happens when you plug in the negative 4 into the simplified? What do you get? Negative 7. Negative 7. How do you get that, Juliet, real quick? Um, because you plug in um, negative 4 into the x. And negative 4 minus 3 is negative 7. Equal 4 minus 3. It's a negative, it's just not there. You can't, it's over the blue. Sorry, colors. So negative 4 minus 3 gives you negative 7. So remember, you need to determine the location of the hole. Well, take a look at your graph. Press trace on your graph right now. And then just trace over until you get to around negative 4 for the x value. And take a look at where the y value is around. Again, press trace, and then use the left arrow key, or right arrow key, probably left to trace over until you get to the x value, x value of negative 4, until your x value becomes negative 4. Where are you getting close to? Now look at the y value. What is it approximately? It's approximately negative 7. You see that? It might say like negative 7 point something or negative 6 point something. Seems I see some confusion on faces. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be exactly 7, and it can't. Why? Because what's there? Oh, yeah. There's a hole there. There's nothing there. It's like an empty space. That's why you're not going to see that. But the idea is the limit, and let's talk about that. Now. So if we had, again, our function was x squared plus x minus 12. Oops. By the way, guys, have you been using the insert function on here? Some of you read type over. You don't have to type over it. See how I, pl I put out the plus here? Watch what I press. Second, insert, which is above the delete. And then press a plus sign. It can insert any keys in there or any commands. But if you have a long line, you don't want to redo it. So just think about that. Now, notice, by the way, already, isn't that a parabola? In my graph, where you started graphing the parabola because the denominator is not there. So that denominator has a big effect on the problem. And it was just x plus 4. Okay, and then I hit graph. Let's go, for, well, it gave me a syntax error because I had the times there, but let's go take a look at it now. Here's my line, right? Yeah, that's what everybody saw so far. What I want you guys to realize is if you go to your table and you plug in negative 4, like Isela told us, we get an error there. How come we get an error? Because look at the original. Plugging in negative 4 makes my denominator 0. Makes my numerator 0, which is just indeterminate. So you're going to get an error. But if I go back to my graph, and I hit this trace function right here. See the x and y gives me? Just trace to the left until you get to around negative 4 for the x value. And it's close. See negative 4.04? And take a look at the y value, negative 7.04. But if you try to find that exact value, it won't work. 
And something I didn't realize, Mr. Smith showed me this yesterday. If you zoom in enough here, you'll see the hole actually in the graph. There'll be like an empty pixel. Did you see this? I didn't know that existed. Did you know? You didn't know that? Existed? See? If you zoom in really far, you'll end up seeing an empty pixel. But you've got to keep zooming in on this spot. So if you want to see that, let's do that. We go to zoom in, but I want to zoom in on this location. So I want to zoom in on the location it's at. So hit enter once. I don't see it, right? It still looks like there's no hole there. But that's where I'm looking right now. Let's zoom in again. I'm going to enter one more time. He's going to prove me wrong now that I said this. Jeez, maybe it's not going to work. He showed me and it worked one time. Let's try one more time. We're going to around negative 4. Oh, we got to move over. I'm going too far over. That's why. Look at my coordinates, guys. I'm trying to get to negative 4. Okay, there's where it would be. Too, right? Meanwhile, Anna, <laughs> when you when you worked on this with Mr. Smith, it did work for you too, right? What functions? You remember? Hey, it was like homework problems. Some pocket problems. Forget. All right. Unfortunately, I've been proven wrong with the calculator. Oh, come on, thanks, Jason. All right, let's go back and grab. So all I want you to do, quickly draw your xy axis. This is a line. We don't need much work to do here. <laughs> the focus shine. The y-intercept is negative 3. 1, 2, 3. There's my y-intercept. I should put at least increments to show I'm going by 1. Now. At this point in time, you're going to go down one over one, down one over one, down one over one. Keep doing that. Make sure you put your hole up. Again, the hole is at negative 4 and negative 7. So here's 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. There's the hole in the graph. That's a little ugly. Do that again. Okay, there's the hole in the graph. So again, let's see if it matches up. Down one over, down one over, down one over, down one over. We're good to go. Because again, what was my slope? My slope was simply a 1 in front of here. There's a 1 in front of it, and the y-intercept is negative 3. So we're going to connect these points. Scroll back down. And what you have here is simply a line with a hole in it. Okay, again, this is just my y-intercept. That's why you see a dot there. But in this problem, whatever your numerator simplifies to is what you end up having. Okay, again, it does not matter what the denominator said, except for the fact that it creates a hole has no effect on the problem once it reduces. So the conclusion I would like you guys to write down is what I said before. If your denominator completely cancels, so if there are no x's left in the denominator, just grab what you see in the numerator and think about the denominator as a whole. Would there be one just like a number? Sure, and that's the same thing because what if we had this? If I had made this 2x plus 8, then you would have factored out a 2, which would have left this as x minus 3 over 2 here, which is really then just 1 half x minus 1.5, which is still a line. So Victoria's question is a great question, guys. If this had been 2x plus 8, you would have factored out a 2, made it 2x plus 4. You'd be left with x minus 3 over 2. x minus 3 over 2, distribute the 2 as a division into both of these. 1 divided by 2 is 1 half. 3 divided by 2 is 1.5. It would still be a line. Okay, it would still be like it's all a matter of if there are x's left. You could have numbers left in the bottom, but if there are no x's left, you grab what's left up top. What about this one real quick? Jason. Is there any problem with 
Y Sam. Oh, wow. Okay. Maybe zoom in enough, guys. Take a look and see what happens here. You're going to see the graph kind of goes crazy when you zoom in enough. I'm going to find it, but clearly he did more than me there. Take a look at the graph on it, guys. You're going to see this like gap as a whole, and it kind of like almost goes down like an acid there, even though it's actually a hole. Oh, very interesting to look at. Actually, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> All right. How about this one? We're not going to graph it, but please take a look. How would you simplify the numerator? Take an X out. Okay. Start by taking an X out. Guys, we're making up a new problem, hypothetically. Hypothetical. You don't have to do it, just listen. Okay. So here's what you would get for this problem, guys. Take a look here. You end up having a hole. Where is the hole's location, though? Negative one. Negative one. Negative one. Why? But why zero? Why not one? You do cancel, but that give me the reason. Why zero? They're undefined. Not in German, right there, no. Undefined. Why is it zero here? People, let's focus. Come on. We still got two problems to do, and we have 20 minutes left. Is there's no X on the bottom? No. Remember, the whole question you're asking yourself is always the same thing. What causes the denominator to become zero? If x were zero, <laughs> Daniels, what would cause what would cause our denominator here to become zero is simply zero. If you plug a zero in for x, don't you end up with a zero here? Yeah. That's what that's the location here. So there's a hole in this problem at x equals zero. Well, what kind of a graph will this look like? Girls, please stop talking and focus. What kind of a graph would this look like? Look at the degree of the polynomial, guys. The x is reduce. What are you left with? What is this going to become? x1. If you fold the back out, it would be what? x squared, right? So it would be a parabola. Very good. This graph here, because the x is reduce, you're left with just a 3 in the denominator. There's no x's down here. If you graph the numerator alone, you have a parabola. Okay, so this is a good idea to remember here. Whenever the numerator cancels one of the denominators and you're left with no x's in the, de in the denominator, you're going to have what's left up top, which in this case would be a parabola with a hole at x equals 0. So basically, you can count, if there's an x, like you factor it out and you have an x, and you have an x and you have an x and you You can cancel that. Mm -hmm. It's like any factor. What did we cancel before? We canceled x plus 4, right? Because it was in both spots. Well, there's an x in both spots. And what would cause that to be 0? It would be just 0. This is one you've got to memorize, guys. Whenever there's an x in the bottom by itself as a factor, the discontinuity is always going to be x equals 0. If it's not a whole, it's a vertical asymptote at x equals 0. Same thing. Do it. Um, what did you say is like, it cancels the x? The, um, what did it Mm -hmm. If you cancel all the x's out of the bottom, whatever's left up top is your graph. Okay? Keep in mind if you have a number, as Victoria said, this affects it, but the general shape of the graph comes from the top. Let's look at the next one. Let's do this quickly, please. Please start right away, factor. Now, looking at your denominator here, you're going to see that clearly there's no holes in this graph. There are no holes in this graph. My discontinuities occur at x equals 0 and x equals 3. Now, beyond that, I want to look at my degrees and my denominators. My, de my numerator and denominator. What is my degree relationship here? Isn't it hard to ask? And what? Very good. Somebody's memorizing it. Very good. 
degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator. Hence, you have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. That's one of our three cases. You must have that memorized. It helps a lot. You can always derive that. Okay, the degree of the numerator is 1. The degree of the denominator is 2. When the degree of the numerator is less than the denominator, you always have that. Now, what are these called if they're not holes? Vertical asymptotes. Okay, those are my two vertical asymptotes. And remember, for domain restrictions, we should really say not equal to, and for our asymptotes, we actually write equal to. Okay, so those are our vertical asymptotes and our horizontal asymptotes on top. See how fast you can go through these problems now? You don't have to sit there and go through every single step thinking them over and over. Remember your rules as you do nothing. After we have our asymptotes and no holes in this graph, what's next? Intercepts. Good, John. Remember a hip. Okay, we did the asymptotes. There's no holes. Intercepts are next. So for intercepts, what do we got here? Um, why? Good, because it's negative 4 over 0. The y-intercept is negative 4 over 0, so as Derek said, it does not exist. There is no y-intercept. How come there's no y-intercept? Another reason besides that, again, yes, the y-intercept, you get negative 4 over 0, which means dNe. Okay. Why? Look at the vertical asymptote, and x equals 0. What will that look like? When I graph this later on, and I have my y-axis here, a vertical asymptote of x equals 0 is simply an asymptote along the y-axis, which means that the graph can't get there, right? Yeah. Isn't an asymptote mean that it's going to look something like this eventually? There isn't going to be a y-intercept, because there's an asymptote there. So whenever you have an asymptote here, you're not going to have a y-intercept. They correlate. Again, because there was an asymptote at x equals 0, you have a vertical line there, which will not ever be touched, which means there's no y-intercept. Hence, does not exist. Okay, again, we'll grab in a second, but that was just a quick sketch down there. Hmm. All right, that doesn't want to agree. Next, after the y-intercept, I find x-intercepts, setting the factor form equal to 0. Remember, use this for the y-intercept, use this for your x. What do I have with the denominator? What does the denominator do for me here? Nothing. Why? Because it multiplies up to 0. Remember, if you want to solve for x here, you would normally multiply this up, move it on up, but then it becomes 0. And you're left with just 0 equals x minus 4. So x equals 4 is your x-intercept, or 4 comma 0. So I've got my x-intercept of 4. I've got vertical asymptotes at 0 and 3. I've got a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0 and I've got no y-intercept. So if I were to sketch this, again, remember, please draw a sketch. 4, 0 might be here, if I'm estimating. And I've got an asymptote at 3. I've got another asymptote at 0. And I've got another asymptote at y equals 0. Remember, this is my horizontal in green, and my vertical asymptotes are both in red. Okay, at 0 and at 3 are my vertical asymptotes from right here. y equals 0 from the top right there was my horizontal asymptote. That's the green line, and there's my intercept. At this point, it's clear that I don't have enough to graph, right? So what do I have to do? Find points. Find points. So look at your graph here. I want to hear from somebody else, not me, a suggestion of points based on your sketch alone. So again, Based on your sketch alone, give me a suggestion of points you might use here to grant. Trayvon, give me a bunch. This is 3, so you pick 2.5. Good idea. What else? I uh, wouldn't go that crazy. Again, this is 2.5. You want to pick a few points in here. So maybe 2.5, then 2, then 1.5, then 1, like that. Okay? If you go by tenths, it's going to be a threat. Right. <laughs> okay, that's what I would pick to really represent the middle range, or the middle domain, actually, the middle area here. What about the right side? Somebody else, the right side. Six is a point. Three is a point. What else? Oh, wait, no, that's three. Guys, this is three here, so what do I want to write? So 3.5, 4.5, 5.5. 
four, five, six, maybe. Okay, again, I'm picking randomly here. But this is, this is at three. Then we said 3.5. Do I really need to plot four? No. Why? Four is, no, no. Four is the intercept. The asymptote is three. Remember, the asymptote was three. The intercept is four. So when you plug a four in, what are you going to get? You're going to get zero. So you don't need the four here. So just go right to five and six. Okay, then finally on the left hand side, maybe like negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four. Just pick the four numbers to the left. Okay, graphing those or plotting those in your calculator, that's going to be our table of points. Okay, there's a lot of points to plot here. It really does cause you to have to do a lot of work. If you have a table on your calculator, not much work to do at all. Okay, you sit there, type it in, fill it in, get the value. Let's see what we get for these values. I might not have them all, so I might need your help. I'm going to fill them when I have on mine. Again, guys, I pick points in my notes. We might have picked different ones. It does not matter. What was negative 3 when you plugged that in? Anybody got that? Negative 3? Anybody? Negative 3? And what about 6, Victoria? What about 1.5? 1.5. <laughs> Something's wrong with my calculator. That's right. No, I hear it. Okay. Show me how to do it. A lot of points here. Yeah, there's a whole lot of points here. So for this kind of a problem, we want to take all these points and sketch them on our graph. Okay, we're going to want to put them on our graph over here. Now, well, how did we do this last time? Remember, look at the biggest y value on here. What's the biggest y value you see? 2.8. Uh, 2.8. See that right there? 2.8 is the biggest. Where's the smallest y value? Um, Look at no, the negatives, guys. Be careful. Come on. You're missing points. Oh, yeah. No, negative. Negative. Yeah, I want the smallest that value. No, but negative. Smallest means most negative number, guys. Remember, <laughs> you're looking for your y mean and your y max. Negative 1.25 is a lot smaller than negative 0.29. Smaller means less on the number line. Remember, a number that is smaller is further in this direction. Okay, so negative 1.25 would be back here, whereas negative 0.29 is over here. Be careful there. So the smallest value is negative 1.25. The largest value is 2.8. So for my y min and y max, for my y min and y max, I might go from negative 2 to 3. <laughs> now, guys, focus. Come on. You can't lose attention when one person walks in. We have on the x-axis, we go all the way to 6, we go all the way to 6, and we go all the way back to negative 4. So my x-min and my y-min, we might say x-min is negative 4, and x-max is 6. Again, I'm trying to help you guys because some of you are still confused about windows and what they mean. This is what your windows really are here. Okay, again, look at my original graph. The original graph tells me nothing. This is not helping me. It's my data points that give me my domain and range I'm going to use here. My domain is from negative 4 to 6. My range is from negative 2 to 3. So when you plot this, think about that correspondingly. So you might want to go every two boxes is one unit here instead of every one box for the y-axis. For the x-axis, it might be every one box is one unit. Um, Julia, what's your question? Um, uh, what do we put for the second, second y? For the, you got to speak up. What do we put for the second y? The second y? Yeah. Um, we're, we're Two comma one. Or this over here. No, I I'm trying to answer your question, but I see two y's here. I don't know what that is.
Oh, what do you put in Y2? Y2, all you're ever going to put in Y2 is either your horizontal or slant asymptote. But the horizontal asymptote is Y equals 0. So it's already showing up to it. It's your X axis. Okay? So if you do it, that's fine, but it's not really going to show up there. At this point, again, I'm going to go maybe by twos here. So this is going to be one, or sorry, every two boxes. Okay, keep that in mind. And I'm going to try and straighten my graph a little bit. Okay, try and go every two boxes here. You don't need to label every box, please. Give me the first one. I know what it means after. Here, the same thing. Okay, I start with my vertical asymptote at x equals zero. That's that green line there. Then I have a vertical asymptote at x equals 3. That's that one there. I've got a horizontal at y equals 0. That's that one across there. And I've got a hole, or I've got an uh, intercept at x equals 4. That's all I know prior to plotting those points. Now go ahead and plot your points and see what you get. I'm going to put the general shape up. This is what you will get if you do it. Now, this one is very interesting. Watch what happens here. It crosses the horizontal asymptote, but then it comes back down toward it. So it still is an asymptote, but it happens to cross it over there, which is very interesting to think about. Because when you try to think of an asymptote as something that usually doesn't get crossed, but that's really only the vertical asymptote. Remember, the horizontal asymptote just indicates the end behavior. So toward the end, it's not going to maybe get crossed. But it can get crossed here, and it does because there's the x-intercept. So this is the general graph you should see if you were to graph this. Okay, plot your points, make sure it makes sense. Let's go on to number seven. Okay, I want to finish with number seven here. Okay, number seven is very, very difficult. Okay, simply because now I'm giving you properties, and what I would like you to do here is come up with an equation first. So based on what I'm telling you at the top, notice I made some corrections. I apologize. Look up here at the top real quick. There are some differences on mine than yours. So look at your four uh, characteristics. I think yours are a little bit different, correct? So just correct what you see. I changed it for a reason. I went back and looked and thought about it, and this one made a lot more sense. So please take a look. Criteria one is that it crosses the x-axis at 2 and 4. No longer touches. Touches has to do with the tangent, so you would have a double root, but it kind of messed up the graph. Okay? So this is going to have just 2 and 4. A whole and negative 1. Is that what yours says already? No, Okay, so change that to a whole and negative 1 then, please. The vertical asymptotes, are those different also? I have negative 5 and 6 here. Check yours to make sure it's the same. And then criteria 4 is a horizontal asymptote at y equals 3. Okay, so make sure those are identical. I know they're different. Please correct what you see on your paper. Now, what I want you to do is come up with an equation that represents what you see here. And this is not easy. You need to think about what a y-intercept is and what an x-intercept is and what a vertical asymptote is and what a hole is here. So I want to do this together, even though I said we're going to do it separately, just for sake of time. We have four minutes. I wanted to give you like 10 minutes to work on this together, but I think we're going to run out of time, and I want to make sure we get to this. So what I want to do is ask for volunteers to help me here, though. When you see that there's a hole, what does that mean about the original function? Derek. Good. Immediately, if there's a hole at x equals negative 1, x plus 1 is in the top and the bottom. Because that's what creates the hole. So start by putting a fraction line, and let's start by putting x plus 1, x plus 1. That takes care of criteria, sorry, criteria 2. And I'm only doing that because to me that's the easiest one first. Because a hole means it's in both top and bottom. And how would you get negative 1? By having plus 1. What else? Somebody give me another criteria. Victoria. Very good. So what are the factors in the bottom then, Victoria? X plus five. And? Very good. Again, take a look. When you have a vertical asymptote, x plus 5 would cause a vertical asymptote where? Here, at negative 5. x minus 6 would cause this vertical asymptote. So that tells me two more. Claudia. Um, so 
awesome job up top. These would create x-intercepts at 2 and 4. Well, that's what it means when it crosses the x-axis. Something that crosses the x-axis is an x-intercept. Again, these were from the hole. We're drawing lines now, sorry. Okay, we have criteria 1, 2, and 3 now, Pat. Last thing to do. This is the toughest one. Horizontal asymptotes occur from the degrees, don't they? Look at the degrees. What would the degrees be from top to bottom? For both, right? X cubed and X cubed, because I have three factors. So I'm going to have X cubed up here and X cubed down here. But I have an asymptote of three. So what does that tell me? What do I have to do to this? Three over one. Remember, whenever you have a horizontal asymptote of y equals some number, it comes from the degrees being the same and looking at the leading coefficients. So what do you really need here is a 3. So simply just put a 3 right here. Because later on when you FOIL this and box method it, then you just have to distribute the 3 and you'll end up with a 3 right here plus all this other junk over here. So this is your final answer. That's all it is. Again, you're taking all of your properties and you're putting them into an equation. Now, technically speaking, I could have done this. And tell me if you think about this. What if I put a 6 here and a 2 here? Still. Isn't that still 3? Mm -hmm. So I could have done this. What else could I have done? 9, nine and 3. What else? 27 and 9. 12 and 4. What about negative 18 and negative 6? Yeah. That also gives me 3. So how many answers can I have? Not a million, but how many? Infinity. What is it? Infinity. Infinity, or an infinite amount of answers. So that's why I had you guys, I said, compare it to somebody around you, because you could have come up with a million or an infinite amount of answers. Okay? Again, you're using your properties. Tonight, here's what I want you to do. Finish concept 46 worksheet. Some of you will fall behind here. Make sure you get caught up. Tomorrow, you're going to have to grab. No multiple choice, you're going to have to grab. Review tomorrow, test Thursday. Keep this in mind. Today's makeups. 4.30 to 5.15. Tomorrow, remember, no makeups tomorrow. Okay, after school, I'm not going to be here. Okay, I've got the science thing. Thursday, I'm going to tomorrow, 4 to 5. 4 to 5.